الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما يزال البلاء بالمؤمن في نفسه وأهله وولده حتى يلقى الله وما عليه خطيئة أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama e kiram elders beloved brothers in islam as muslims as people of iman it is a dictate and a requirement of the iman which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us that should cause every one of us to be concerned and worried We are going through a period of sorrow and grief. The Muslim Ummah globally is facing torrid circumstances, is facing a level of suffering and aggression that it is difficult to find a parable of it in the annals of history. such is the level of suffering and persecution loss of life loss of property loss of livelihood that one feels that if even the perhaps if even the rocks or stones had eyes <coughs> they also would begin to cry to witness the pitiable condition of this ummah as i mention each one of us should be concerned each one of us should be worried this is a requirement of the iman which allah has given us iman is not something tangible it's not something you can take and put inside a safe or you can weigh it or measure it but if we look in hadith allah's rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us certain yardsticks certain measuring tapes call it certain gauges thermometers what will iman bring about in you one example of this is the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said mathalul mu'minina fi tawaddihim wa tarahumihim wa ta'atufihim ka mathalil jasad اذا اشتكى عذو منه تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى what a beautiful example our master sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us he described this ummah whether it is turkey whether it is syria whether it is burma whether it is kashmir whether it is india whether it is somalia whether it is sudan wherever he said the example of my ummah is like one body in what sense fi tawaddihim wa tarahumihim wa ta'atufihim he said in their love for one another in their concern for one another in their compassion for one another in their sympathy for one another they are not disjointed parts but they are one body And how does a body react to a threat? How does a body react to persecution and pain? How does a body react to sickness? When pain or hurt is experienced in one part of the body, the whole body comes together. It does not have this mindset 
that the head is paining, so it's the head's problem, the rest of the body don't have to worry about it. Or the hand or the foot is paining, so that is someone else's problem, not my problem, let me carry on with my life. No. Allah's Rasul said, like the entire body comes together. The head is paining, but the whole body is not sleeping. The head is paining, but the whole body is broken out in a fever, in reaction to the pain in one part of the body. He said exactly like that, the iman within you will not allow you to isolate yourself from the hardships, difficulty, persecution, pain and suffering that is being experienced by any part of this ummah. On the one hand, those who are afflicted with hardship and difficulty, let us understand, shaitan might try and plant the seed in the heart. That na'uzu billah, summa na'uzu billah, how could Allah do this? How could the Muslims be suffering like this? Allah's mercy is such, inna rahmati sabaqad ghadabi. Allah has written on his arsh, inna rahmati sabaqad ghadabi. My rahmat, my mercy is greater than my anger. One ajeeb verse in the Quran, there is nothing compulsory on Allah, Allah's istighna'iyat, Allah's independence, Allah's qudrat, Allah's kibriyai, Allah's jalal, walahu al-kibriya'u fi samawati wal ard, wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim, authority, kibr, greatness, magnificence in the heavens and the earth only belongs to Allah. Allah is the creator, Allah is the controller, Allah is the giver, Allah is the taker. No one questions the authority of Allah. لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون No one can question the actions of Allah. It is Allah that will do the questioning. Allah, in one place in the Quran says, I made something farz upon myself. There is nothing farz and obligatory on Allah. Allah is not answerable to anyone. You and I are answerable. This is a manifest indication of the extreme compassion of Allah. That Quran uses these words. This is Kalamullah. Kataba Rabbukum. Kataba Rabbukum. Your Rabb made farz on himself. Made obligatory upon himself. What? Kataba Rabbukum ala nafsihir rahma. Allah made mercy and compassion towards you, farz on himself. Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Allah's mercy encompasses every facet of this creation. Allah does not make zulm on anyone. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدٍ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ How many places in the Qur'an? Qur'an is haq. Qur'an is the absolute truth. وَمَنْ أَسْتَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا وَمَنْ أَسْتَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا There is no one more truthful than my Allah. My Allah says we will not oppress anyone. مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ Not an atom's weight of zulm Allah will ever make. Whatever is happening, it is Allah's justice. Whatever is happening, it is Allah's haq. Whatever is happening, it is Allah's hikmat. This our iman demands this. Unfortunately, we have a limited intellect. We look at things in a very, very restricted and confined sense. Many of us have this mindset, this world has to be an ideal existence. We are trying to make a jannat out of dunya. We want happiness, we want ease, we want comfort, we want luxury, we don't want test and hardship. That is human nature. But the reality, this world is not an ideal existence. Dunya is not a jannat. Jannat is after we pass away. Jannat is in the akhirat. 
Paradise is in the akhirat in this world. It is Allah's sunnat. Wala nablu wana kum. Wala nablu wana kum. Nam and noon mushaddad. When it comes together in one expression of Quran, ulama say it carries the meaning of qasam. Allah says, "We take an oath. We will test you." بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات. Allah says we will test you, but even in this verse is Allah's mercy. Allah is talking about hardship. Allah says in this world you will experience hardship, but here also Allah says be shy, not too much, not beyond what you can bear. But in this world we will be, we will test you. Why? In Allah, إذا أحب قوما ابتلاهم. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when Allah loves a people, Allah tests them. In عظم الجزاء ما عظم البلاء. When the test will be great, the reward from Allah also will be great. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I mentioned in the beginning. My Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma yazalu al-bala bil mu'min." They will always be tests for a mu'min, for a person of iman. Hardship, difficulty will come. Fi nafsihi, wa malihi, wa waladihi. Sometimes his life, sometimes his family, sometimes his property, sometimes his near and beloved ones. Test will come. What is the wisdom behind it? What is the wisdom behind it? Hatta yalqa Allah wa ma alayhi khati'a. So that by making sabr, by accepting the decision of Allah, by understanding this is from my Allah, it is for my khayr, it is for my benefit, whether I can understand it or not, by exercising sabr and patience, what will happen? Yalqa Allah wa ma alayhi khati'a. This person will meet Allah on the day of judgment and no sin will remain on him. This is Allah's washing machine. This is Allah's cleansing process. وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Whatever hardship, whatever difficulty the ummah is experiencing in this world by the qasam of my Allah, my respected brothers, understand it or not, when faced, with what the azab of akhirat, this is a very small azab. One hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, beautiful comparison, our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives of dunya with akhirat. Hardship of this world with the hardship of jahannam. He says, يُؤْتَى بِأَنْعَمِ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ Those of us who have some understanding of Arabic, Put this hadith in context. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described a person. He said, An'ami ahlid dunya. An'ami. The word an'um comes from the root word na, noon a'ayn meem, which means ni'mat, which means bounties, which means luxuries, which means pleasures. He said, An'am. An'am. No one had a more enjoyable and happy life than this person. A life of luxury, a life of comfort, a life without test, a life without hardship. Put it in layman's terms, he had a back of steel. He had a life where every wish, every desire was fulfilled. He, had, he didn't know sickness, he didn't know pain, he didn't know discomfort. Even to a, the minutest degree. This is an ami ahli dunya. No one had an enjoyable life in this world like this person. But, min ahli nar. He was from the people of Jahannam. He did not have Iman. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَيُسْبَغُ فِي النَّارِ sabra." This person will be taken and put for one millisecond. One millisecond in Jahannam. And then the question will be asked to him, هَلْ رَأَيْتَ خَيْرًا قَدْتُ هَلْ رَأَيْتَ خَيْرًا قَدْتُ have you, have you ever known any pleasure, any goodness, any comfort, any luxury? Millisecond in Jahannam will obliterate even the memory, even the memory of any enjoyment this person ever experienced in dunya. And this was an ami ahlid dunya. No one had a more enjoyable life than him. 
millisecond in Jahannam. And on the oath of Allah, understand this, contextualize this, there is no question of lie, no question of exaggeration, no question of ambiguity. This person will swear an oath by the qasam of my Allah. Ma ra'aytu khayran qattu. I have never known comfort or ease or luxury in my entire life. That is Akhirat, that is Jahannam, that is the hardship of Akhirat compared with the hardship of dunya. This is why my Allah says, Adabil Adana, whatever you are experiencing in this world, it is still a small Azab. On the one hand, for the believer, it's an opportunity to make sabr, it's an opportunity to exercise patience. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, whenever Allah tested me, this is that personality. Rasulullah said, Law kana ba'di nabiyun lakana umar. If there had to be a nabi after me, it would have been umar. That kind of intelligence, perception, understanding Allah blessed him with. He said, whenever Allah tested me, I found three great bounties in that test. The first, the first, Allah tested me with trial, tribulation, maybe in my life, maybe in my property, maybe in my family, but my deen and iman was intact. My deen and iman was intact. I made the shukr of Allah. Oh my Allah, you haven't taken my deen and iman away from me. Second bounty, when I pondered and reflected over how much my Allah had given me, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا Whatever the difficulty, whatever the hardship, do not be ungrateful. My Allah says, if you have to count my bounties upon you, you will never be able to count it. I realize that, well, Ya Allah, whatever you have done, your ni'mats and your bounties are far greater. And you have not tested me beyond that which I can bear. This was the second bounty which I saw when my Allah tested me. And the third bounty, the third bounty, the third favor. He said, when I looked into Quran and Hadith, what Allah has promised. Those who will make sabr. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says, give glad tidings to those who will make sabr. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allahu Akbar. In hadith we find, say subhanallah, Allah will give you so much reward that will fill the space between the heavens and the earth. Many, many ahadith we find, do one thing, Allah will give you so much. Do this, Allah will give you so much. But when it comes to sabr, Allah says, we will give you so much, so much, so much that you won't be able to even count what we will give you. أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah will give you dunya. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا Allah says those who made sabr, we made them the imams of this world. That is dunya. And akhirat. وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ لَا يَرَوْنَ فِيهَا شَمْسًا وَلَا زَمْهَرِيرًا Allah says, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Because of their sabr, we gave them jannat. We gave them silk brocades. We showered the bounties of jannat upon them. أُولَائِكَ يُجَزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَيُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا Allahu Akbar. Allah says, we paid them back. We recompensed them with sabr. Jannat. And not only jannat. وَيُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا They got the salams of the ghilman, the servants of jannat. The salams of the hoors of Jannat, the salams of the malaika of Jannat, and Allahu Akbar, the accolade, they got the salams of Allah in Jannat. When Bima Sabaru, when they made Sabar, the beloved of Allah, the chosen of Allah, the blessed of Allah, what greater example than our noble master, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's an Urdu expression, they say, burhape ke aulaad dil ko pakar lete hai. Naturally, a parent will have love for, for the, parents will have love for their children, but 
Sometimes the biological order and system of Allah is a person gets a child at a late age, advanced age. They say, Burhape ke aulad dil ko pakar lete. The child that comes when the parent's age is advanced, there's a special love, special affection for that child. Our beloved master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 60 or 61 years of age, blessed with Sayyidina Ibrahim radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he gets the news that Maria Qibtiya radiallahu anha has given birth to a son, Ibrahim, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so happy, so happy that the sahabi that delivers the news there and then he gives him an entire camel as hadiya and gift. Allah's taqdeer, Allah's system, 18 months, 18 months. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa made intizam for Maria Qibtiya two or three kilometers outside Madinah Munawwara. The child is 18 months of age. The news comes. I'm cutting the incident short. Ibrahim is in the last gasp of life. Like the wind, Allah's Rasul Salaam rushes. Sahaba say we couldn't even keep up with him. He enters the room and like a lantern, allow about a lantern, about to go out. Almost as if this beautiful flower, 18 months of age. Can we imagine the beauty? Can we imagine the affection? Can we imagine the kindness? Can we imagine the attraction? As if this flower is just waiting for that final gaze in the eyes of its beloved father. As the master enters the room, picks the child up and it's the last gaze when the child locks its eyes upon its father and then the life is extinguished. Al-Aynu Tadma Al-Aynu Tadma One hand one hand, his maqam, wal duha, wal layli idha saja. One hand, his maqam, yaseen, wal Quran al hakim, inna kalamin al mursaleen. One hand, his maqam, inna a'atayna kal kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wan har, inna shani aka huwal abatar. One hand, his maqam, ma kana muhammadun, aba ahadim mir rijalikum, walakir rasul Allah, wa khatam al nabiyyin, wa kana Allahu bi kulli shayin alima. One hand, his maqam, tabarak al ladi, nazzal al furqan ala abdihi, liyakuna lil alamin a nadira. One hand, his maqam, wa ma arsalnaka, illa kafat al lil nasi bashiro wa nadira. وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين ونهان هز مقام شفاعة كبرى مقام محمود keys to jannah on the other hand insan بشر a father what was the pain what was the grief what was the hurt العين تدمع now the father is speaking the eyes are wet with tears والقلب يحزن and the heart is grieving but لا نقول إلا ما يرضي به ربنا ربنا on my lips no words will come except that which pleases my Allah. إن لله ما أخذ وله ما أعطى what Allah gave it belongs to Allah and what Allah took away belongs to Allah. فالتصبر والتحتسب make sabr and have hope in the reward of Allah. That example was left behind. The most beloved of Allah, Allah tested. Allah tested on the one hand. Coming back to what we were saying, my respected brothers. It's not a Turkey problem and not a Syria problem and not a Palestine problem. We are one ummah. Those that have passed away, Allah give them the maqam of the shuhada. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this concept of shaheed is not only a person who, is, who gives his life in the path of Allah. Ash-shuhada u khamsa. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one hadith, he said there are five shuhada, five types of shuhada. Ada hadith, ulama have enumerated up to 70 types of shuhada. One type of shaheed, my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sahibul hadmi shaheed. The one who upon whom a wall fell or a building collapsed. And he lost his life on Iman. Such a person, Allah will raise him as a shaheed, as a martyr on the day of judgment. The hope is there. Allah give them the rank of the shuhada on the one side. Open your hearts for them. Cry for them. Make dua for them. Assist them financially. Assist them financially to the extent that you can. On the other hand, Understand, understand this azab that has come. 
This difficulty that has come, this plight that has come, is a wake-up call. Is a wake-up call. This is Allah's system. Falola إِذْ جَاهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَذَرَّعُوا Allah complains in the Qur'an. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? That when the test came, when the affliction came, when the hardship came, turn the clock back a little bit in our context. Riots, flood, coronavirus. What was the reaction? What was the reaction? When it came to coronavirus, let us exercise caution, medical precaution, isolate, social distance, wear the mask, whatever. How many of us said, let us take this precaution of making Tawbah? How many said, let us make this precaution of making our Salah in the Masjid with Jamaat? Virus, flood, test, calamity, this is from Allah. Quran tells us, Qullay yusibana, Qullay yusibana, illa ma katab Allahu lana, huwa maulana, wa ala Allahi fal yatawakkal ilmu'minun. No and understand, lay yusibana, no hardship, no earthquake. Scientists can tell you, tectonic plates, imbalance in the surface of the earth. 7.8 magnitude, 9.7 magnitude. Scientists can do all that. They can tell you how it is happening. No scientist by the qasam of my Allah can say why it is happening. These are not random occurrences. Quran tells us no harm, no affliction, no virus, no earthquake, no test, no trial, no hardship can ever befall you. Illa ma katab Allahu lana unless Allah has decreed it. These are not accidental occurrences. These are not happening by chance. This is Allah's wake up call. Sometimes a person is a light sleeper. Tap him, he wakes up. Sometimes he's in a deep sleep. You have to shake him. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ummati hadha marhuma. He said, My Ummat is that Ummat upon which Allah's special mercies are descending. Laysa adabuha fil akhirah. Allah will not punish my Ummat by putting them in Jahannam forever. Adabuha fil dunya. Adabuha fil dunya. My, the azab of my Ummat will be in dunya. Why? Because marhuma. This is Allah's mercy. He will give my Ummat a small Small azab, fitan, zalazil, qatal. He said, what is the small azab? Test will come, virus will come, earthquake will come, zalazil, earthquake. This is Allah's mercy because it is a wake-up call. How often we heard the system of the world has changed, governments have changed, economies have changed, travel has changed because of coronavirus, numbers are going up. How many of us thought for one second, virus numbers went up, what about the number of bare, bare namazis that are going up? What about the number of those involved in riba that are going up? What about the numbers of those that are lying and cheating that are going up? What about the numbers of those that are not fulfilling their financial huku going up? You worried about coronavirus numbers going up, virus numbers going up, fatality numbers going up. Where is this understanding? These are not random occurrences. Allah warns us, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاهُمْ بَأْسُنَا What is wrong with you? When the calamity came, when the test came, when the trial came, you were worried about precautions. Why didn't you take the actual precaution? تَذَرَّعُوا Why didn't you turn to Allah? Why didn't you knock the door of Tawbah? Why didn't you cry before Allah? Why didn't you change your life? That person who had no sunnah on his face, why didn't he bring sunnah? That person who was away from the masjid, why didn't he come to the masjid? Wallah, my respected brothers, open our eyes, see what is going on. This is not even a time for fajr, this is a time for tahajjud. This is a time to knock the door of Allah. This is the time to cry before Allah, to beg from Allah, to 
تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَصِيحًا نَصُوحًا فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ الله says come back come back come back تَذَرَّعُوا زَارِي كَرُوا انكِسَارِي beg cry humble yourself cry before Allah what but but what has happened وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Two things, two things Quran warns us about. That the test will come, the calamity will come, the wake-up call will come, the alarm bell will come and still you will not heed. Still you will not make tawbah. Still you will not wake up. Still you will not realize. Why? Because your hearts have become hard. قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Soiled in guna, soiled in sin to such an extent, when the earth is hard, pour water, the water will just roll away. When the hard ground is hard, plant seeds, nothing will grow. The ground needs to be soft. It needs to be conducive. Qasat kulubuhum. Come into the environment of the masjid. Come into the environment of going out in the path of Allah. Take the amal. Expose yourself to the amal. That will soften this heart. Otherwise Allah says the calamity will come. The test will come. The hardship will come. Coronavirus numbers went up. Fatality numbers went up. Allah's qasam, why didn't, why didn't the number of musallis go up? Why didn't the number of those making tawbah go up? Where, what is our understanding? Have our hearts become so hard? Have we become slaves of science and doctors and, and those whose beliefs are based on total atheism, the denial of the existence of Allah, what example, what understanding they took, what was the difference between their understanding and our understanding? What are we waiting for? The ground shook. Our brothers and sisters by thousands were made shaheed. The whole system of the world changed. Floods came, riots came. Warning upon warning, upon warning and still we are not waking up. Still we are not heeding. Still we are not changing our lives. Still it's the same merrymaking. Still it's the same weddings and functions and extravagance and israf on an unbelievable scale. What are we waiting for? Allah says, what is wrong with you? When the test came, تَذَرَّعُوا Why didn't you turn back? Why didn't you put the brakes? Why didn't you realize it was 45 seconds like that one thing was circulating? 45 seconds this happened, 45 seconds that happened. My respected brothers understand Allah's qudrat. Allah doesn't need 45 seconds. In one millisecond Allah can change the condition. Allah is merciful. Allah is kind. Allah is compassionate. This is Allah's justice. Allah's justice. Allah's justice. Allah's mercy. Allah doesn't make zulm. Allah wants us to come back to Him. Allah warns, وَلَكِنْ قَسَدْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts became hard. وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And shaitan beautified for them their actions. Don't fall into this deception. The time of change has come. Ramadan is coming. It is Shaban now. The season of Allah's mercy. The season of Allah's compassion. Ishtima is coming after Ramadan. Allah is blessing us. These are opportunities. Come back to the masjid. Come back to Allah. Allah give us tawfiq wa akhidah. Allahu Akbar, Allah.